Hi everybody, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. I have got hold of some of this. It's Deco Art Satin Enamel. A lot of fluid artists use this um, to create kind of cloudy effects. I have never ever used it. So I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna see what happens. So I've decided to do a spinning straight pour, I think straight pour, either straight or wing pour. So I'm going to put the canvas, I'm gonna layer up a cup, put the canvas on my cake turntable, pour it out and spin it at the same time. So I've done lots of those in the past, but I've never used this. So I've mixed this in with my colors. Um, and um, yeah, just really excited to see, see what it does. Let me show you the colors. These are the colors I'm using. So the first thing I did was mix each of these up, not the white, all the colors. I mixed them 50-50 paint with the satin enamel. Now the satin enamel is just like a really thick white paint. So the first thing I found, it's not like a pouring medium, it's like a paint. So it mixed, it diluted these colors. So I've gone from bronze, so Pebio Studio Acrylics Iridescent, or Copper, sorry, to this very, very pale color. It's absolutely beautiful, um, but it was really pale. So I actually added more um, copper because it was just too washed out. So that's not quite 50-50, um, it's a bit more paint. This is 50-50, so this is iridescent red blue. So I mixed in 20 grams of the paint, 20 grams of satin enamel, and then I added 80 grams of flood fluoratrol. So this next one, it, again, 50-50 um, um, Decoart Amethyst with the satin enamels and then enamel. And then I put in um, the Flood Fluoratrol and the same with this one um, and the same with this one. So we've got um, the Amsterdam Venetian Rose, Amsterdam Permanent Blue Violet. Now, I was going to do a white base, but looking at those, they're all really, really pale. So instead of adding white, instead of adding a paler colour, I've gone for this, which is just um, no satin enamel. It's just permanent blue violet with some white. So I've added some white so that when this dries, it will darken, but it will hopefully still look purple because if this one just dries, it can look black. So I've gone for a little bit lighter. So that's going to be my base. So no satin enamel in there, but 50% satin enamel, 50% paint in these ones. And then I've mixed it two to one, flood fluoratrol to the paint. So 80 grams of flood fluoratrol to 40 grams of the paint mixture. So I'll, I'll put that in the description of this video um, because it can be a bit confusing. I was just about to start layering up this jug and I realized I think I actually did need the white after all. So although the colors are really pale, um, I think it actually, the white adds so much contrast um, because it's just, it's so much paler than the rest. So um, yeah, I'm gonna add some white. So this is the rough order I'm going to, to pour in. I'm going to um, layer up a jug um, just simply because it's got a funnel. So when I pour out, it, it should pour out quite nicely. So I'm, let me just give them one last stir. I mixed them up a couple of hours ago. So, and it's good to do that because then the air bubbles just rise to the sun, to the surface. By stirring it, I'm adding more air bubbles, but I'm just checking the consistency and just checking that it's all combined properly, which it has. If I try and show you the consistency, it leaves a trail for a couple of seconds, mound on a mound. So it's it's not that thick, but it's it does feel quite... Thick, thick and creamy. It's not as thick as my normal straight pour recipe. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to try and keep the layers separate. So I'm just going to pour down the side of the cup. So I think the colours will probably blend a little bit more than with my normal straight pour, simply because um, the, it does feel a bit runnier. Right, that is looking very, very pretty. It's a bit of a stained jug, so you can't see properly, but that is a really, really pretty colour palette. I'm using a 40 centimetre canvas. Um, this is a lovely deep edge edged canvas, which I just happen to have lying around. Let's just 
trying to get my spatula. Right, um, it's on my cake turntable. Um, I've put a wooden board on my cake turntable um, because the, the, the canvas it, it the canvas needs to be supported by something. I'm putting that on top. So I put push pins in the back of the canvas. So I have leveled the canvas on a level surface, um, but it's not, I don't know if this is level, but it doesn't matter because it won't be staying on here for very long. So let's first of all, just cover the base. I only need a, a pretty thin layer of this, um, but I want to get it covered. So I think I'm just used the spatula just to spread it out nicely. So it's going to be a spinning straight pour. So I'm going to straight pour it into the centre of the canvas and very slowly spin the canvas at the same time. So let's get, I'm going to do it quite slowly. I'm going to do it where I think the center is So my first thoughts, um, it's quite pale, it's quite pastely, um, not too keen at the moment. Um, the Interestingly, that purple looks blue, the colours look really quite different. Let's just give it a good torch. So that reacted quite differently to normal because there's lots of tiny little speckles have popped up. And it doesn't that doesn't normally happen so I'm just going to leave this a few minutes I think just to let it rest just to see what happens and then I'll spin it out right I'm going to start spinning just quite gently Right, so it's all the canvas covered. Um, I'm not particularly liking the composition because it's a square canvas and it's not a round design. It's become quite elongated. So I think what I'm going to do is go for a more um, oval composition. So I think I'm going to deliberately now just stretch this down one side and then also to the opposite corner. So 
So I've got very, very mixed feelings. My first thought, my first feelings are that it's not exact or it's not at all how I wanted it. I was hoping somehow that deep purple was going to be more reactive with the other colours and show through. Um, it's very pale, it's very pastely, and that isn't me really. I like the bright, the bold colours, but actually the more I look at it, the more it's growing on me. I love the composition, having the sort of oval shape, but slightly, slightly um, bendy. Um, really like that. The details are beautiful. So there's definitely some effects um, from the different mixture of, of paint. Um, you've got some wonderful sort of cells, um, cloudy looking effects at the edge. Um, I wonder if my paints were still slightly thick because I didn't get um, the big boulder cells, which I was hoping for um, and expecting. Um, you've got hundreds of little cells. So you've got more little cells than I was expecting, but less bouldery cells. But there are some really, really pretty effects. Um, it will darken as it dries. And I think the bits of purple there, and I think I think you'll just get a little bit more contrast um, I love these two purple corners. It was a shame to tilt the rest off, the other two corners, but composition wise, I just felt it just needed it. It just, it was boring. It was dull. So really, really happy. Not what I wanted or expected. Um, but I think, I, I think I'm going to be really happy with it when it's dried. So it's now dry and I'm so happy with it. It's very, very different. It's very pale, it's very pastel-y, which is a massive contrast to my normal um, artwork, but it's, I really, really like it. I, at one point I was gonna add something extra to the center, something dark and contrasting. I'm so glad I haven't, I've just left it. It's different, but I really, really like it. Um, let me show you up close. These sections, I think, are my favourite, the deeper purple. And you've got these lovely, big, sort of bouldery type cells. And then you've got the contrast of the purple and then the Venetian rose um, with quite a bit of detail, subtle detail, but quite a bit of detail there in the centre. Um, I think my one of my favourite things about the painting is the fact that it's one of the deep edge canvases. So if you look along the edges, I've still got my push pins in, but if you look along the edges, you can see um, just this wonderful, rich design that just falls over the canvas. Um, so I think it, I just, I really like the deep edge canvases for that reason. Um, so yeah, really happy. Not, it didn't go to plan. It's not what I wanted, but it's, I really, really like it. Um, let me know what you think. If you have any thoughts or any comments, please do let me know. Um, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.